Uh, now let's transition while still including some metabolic focus here. I would be remiss as your temporary professor if I didn't include some discussion on longevity. That is, after all, how most people have even become familiar with the word autophagy. It is really a function of the, the rise or the explosion in longevity as both an area of research and an area of kind of hype social media um, influencers. Now, nevertheless, most people are interested in longevity. I certainly want to live a long, healthy life. And so let's take a, just a few minutes to discuss the connection between autophagy and longevity. Uh, and based on everything I've said, it's easy to see how autophagy is relevant in the realm of aging. After all, if autophagy is relevant to complications of obesity or neurodegenerative diseases or cardiovascular health, clearly those are diseases associated with aging. And so the more we can control them, the more we are aging well. So evidence does suggest that aut aut autophagic activity declines with age, leading to the accumulation of damaged cellular components, which we could say is a level of aging um, at the cell itself. If you can't get rid of damaged components of the cell, the cell is, we could say, getting old. So enhancing autophagy, no surprise, has been shown to increase lifespan um, and improve health span in a handful of organisms. Now, I'm using that word very deliberately. Um, so, like, if, for example, animal studies. I'd earlier mentioned an autophagy protein called ATG5. In mice, the genetic overexpression of the autophagy-related gene ATG5 has been shown to enhance autophagy, no surprise, which in this case, and this is, of course, a global um, issue um, in this case, or a global phenomenon where everywhere the ATG5, ATG5 is going to be acting a little more rapidly than normal or more active. Um, but this in these animals led to an extended lifespan and generally improved health markers, including improved insulin sensitivity and overall uh, motor function. So they moved better as well, which suggests a benefit to both muscle and um, neural regulation, because movement is, of course, a combination of those two things. Um, now, of course, there is some pharmacological interventions that have been studied, and I'll only mention one, a famous one, or infamous, if I had my way, rapamycin. Rapamycin, as you know, and I have had an entire metabolic classroom on this topic, is an mTOR inhibitor. That's what's made it famous. That's what's made it famous. So mTOR is an important cellular uh, protein complex that only wants to build. And I'm going to come back to this idea in just a minute. But mTOR wants to build up molecules, whereas autophagy wants to break things down. So no surprise, if mTOR is turned on, autophagy is turned off. In contrast, if mTOR is turned off or inhibited with rapamycin, autophagy would be turned on. So by inhibiting mTOR, rapamycin would, of course, promote autophagy, which can no surprise, contribute to an improved health span. Now, I strongly encourage you to watch my previous metabolic classroom on this topic. I spoke about it abundantly, attempting to highlight some of the positives, which are all most people ever hear, but of course, very deliberately, and I hope convincingly, um, go over the negatives, because there are substantial considerations with the use of this drug um, by biohackers and others who believe that they're going to live longer. Um, Importantly, all of the rapamycin evidence that suggests it promotes longevity, um, all of it is based on animal or insect studies. And in this case, these are organisms who have the benefit of living in utterly germ-free, sterile facilities, so they don't need to worry about any sort of immune comp uh, compromised effects, which rapamycin does compromise the immune system. And they're all genetically identical. So these are people, who, uh, these are not people, organisms, the animals or insects, that are all exactly the same. Well, suffice it to say, humans are not. So it's no surprise that someone may report anecdotally feeling great on rapamycin while others are experiencing all of the complications that come with it, including compromised immune system, including compromised muscle recovery and athletic performance, etc. So please see that earlier metabolic classroom to understand some of the considerations with rapamycin, that it's not all rosy, um, that as much as autophagy is a very beneficial process, in this case, we could say it's a little too much of a good thing. 
which is so often the case when it comes to drugs.